Everyone talks about being a leader, but very few people want to do it. Being a leader, you don't have many friends. You have to speak up. You have to be willing to show up every single day. But you, don't, you don't get to have a bad day. You don't get to be down. You don't get to feel sorry for yourself because everyone's counting on you. In our case, we, don't, we have a couple good athletes, but we're never gonna, I told the kids this too, we're never gonna out-athlete anyone, anyone. Every team is probably gonna have better athletes than we do. However, we will never lose a game because we are out of condition, we are weaker, and we're not as tough, okay? And a lot of the toughness comes, again, Kyle laid the foundation for several years. I, I said that, don't worry about the game, don't worry about the season open, don't worry about the first scrimmage, just is worry about right now, okay? Does that make sense? I don't want the kids to get too wrapped up and too worried. If you, and I always say, if you keep your head down and focus on each step, before, if you, <clears throat> you'll go farther than if you keep your eyes on the horizon. You, people usually stumble, okay? So that was, our, that was my big take, which just let's get the work in today. Don't worry about running. Uh, you, know, if, you know how that is, right? When you're lifting, you gotta run afterwards. Everyone's worried about the running. I said, fuck it, just don't worry about it. And I tell the kids straight up every time, running is going to be easy. Running is going to be a little hard today. I never lie to them. I want them, but I want them focused on what they're doing, okay? And that, that's how we, I try to carry that over to the field. It's very important. So this kid here, uh, I'm not supposed to step in front of the, the 35 there, Bricker, uh, he's a kid that bought all in. And in 2016, he started the, the uh, 2016 offseason benching 185 for five. Uh, he had an okay year, but he was a little uh, apprehensive on the field. Three months later, never benching over more than 205, he benched as a test 215 for 23. Okay? Now, Kyle, or Kyle, will he gained a little too much weight. <laughs> All right? Uh, but that's the kind of key. Now, Last year, he was honorable mention All-State or something like that, I don't know, and he was an absolute force on the field. He's not very fast. He probably runs a five flat 40 if he's lucky, but he's an absolute assassin on the field. And watching him physically change was insane. He's got the biggest quads and ass you've seen on a normal looking human. Uh, and he probably weighed, what, 200 pounds? Yeah. And he's 240 right now, and he's in good shape. So uh, that's one of the many things, uh, one of the many changes. Okay, so let's get to the, uh, some of the meat of it. Our training is incredibly simple. I don't want, it's not the super secret Soviet strength program, okay? I'm gonna just give you the outline and I'll show you what we do. We do some kind of mobility and or gymnastics movement every single day, that's how we start. All right, we do the same basic stuff. I throw in a couple wrinkles here and there. The reason why we don't throw a lot of wrinkles in is because Bricker runs it now. It's important that we have established leadership early on in the offseason. Uh, Bricker got, got the nod. Last year, JJ got the nod. JJ was the, you want to talk about fucking crazy. He jumped over, jumped over a 32-inch box at 305. Now think about that for a second. Not on, over, okay? Uh, he was, I don't know, I think that he might be over there. But anyway, he was absolutely a, a beast, okay? But this, you know, I'm not... <clears throat> The most, it's more important that the kids know their leader and he learns how to speak up because being a leader sucks. Uh, everyone talks about being a leader, but very few people want to do it. Being a leader, you don't have many friends. You have to speak up. You have to be willing to show up every single day. If you have a, you don't, you don't get to have a bad day. You don't get to be down. You don't get to feel sorry for yourself because everyone's counting on you. JJ filled that role admirably last year and now Bricker's doing it. We got to get Bricker a little more I don't want to say vocal, but he needs to assert himself a little bit more. Uh, now KJ is starting to do it too, our top running back. Uh, but that's important. So that they try to, you know, I obviously tell uh, Bricker what to do. You know, I give him hand signals. Uh, four, we got three, uh, two of them. Anyway, so Bricker runs that, okay? All right, so we always start with that. That's nothing new, right? But we do gymnastics. I think that's, that has been hugely helpful. And miraculously, the kids who can do cartwheels, can you guess? They're the best athletes. They're the best players on the field, okay? Um, and the other reason why we do that is our kids' body awareness went through the roof. Now we do <clears throat> a forward roll or a cartwheel to a, to a jump onto a box. And it sounds ridiculous, but when <clears throat> you always know where your body is, is in space, all right? 
and this is again something that they're not really, you know, during physical education or whatever, or, you know, just playing around with the kids, they don't get that. Okay, we do some kind of jumping every workout. Now last year I kind of fucked this up a little bit. I, by the way, my language sucks, I know, I know. All right, but don't let that deter you from my message, okay? So look through that. We do some kind of jumping every single day. Last year I screwed it up a little bit. We probably added a little too much volume of jumping because I wanted to see how far we could take it. You gotta know where the edge is. Does that make sense? Before you uh, know how to pull back. We have found no more than 20 contacts, usually 10 to 15, okay? Now, obviously we have to teach the kids how to land and absorb force, right? When you make a cut, you gotta stick, absorb force, and pull off. So that's our big thing is we gotta teach people how to land first before we teach them how to jump. Now this sounds ridiculous. We have to teach kids how to jump with two feet. And that, sound, that sounds dumb, right? But that's the truth. We have to teach kids how to jump using their arms and both their feet, which uh, that's kind of how it is. So we, that's another thing that we uh, do. Most of our jumps for the majority of the kids are what I would call easy jumps. We land, we jump, and stick the landing. All right, again, absorbing force. Our more experienced guys can do some kind of bounding. Do you guys know what bounding is? When you step off a box, you <clears throat> minimal ground, it's like a, a baseball or a, sorry, a tennis ball hitting the ground hard, and they bound up on top of a box, okay? The lighter kids and the kids who are a little stronger can handle that. But again, no more than 10 or 15. I took it probably to as much as 50 per workout, and it w didn't do any better, and it got the, the sh kids, uh, a couple of them had shin splints, so we just cut that out, so. Once again, a, a little bit micro dosing over a long period of time works, right? Amazing. You're never gonna guess that. Okay, we do, we lift three days a week. We have, after every one of those days, we run, okay? During the winter months, it gets a little tough, but if, if we can, uh, if I can go out there and not get sued, uh, or Kyle doesn't get a call from the parents, then I'm good, I will run them, okay? So that's three days, uh, three days a week, three days of running. We also do only one main barbell lift per workout. The reason we do this is I want complete focus on one thing during the training session. I don't want four or five barbell work, you know, I don't want to do clean, squat, bench, because then nothing's important, okay? When you're dealing with kids, especially high school kids, you got to keep them on track. So we have one main focus per workout. That main lift is generally done for between 50 and 75 submax reps uh, a day. Uh, sometimes we'll push that a little farther. We actually tried uh, a little too much, and again, that, that backfired. Every day we do two assistance exercises. So every time we do one set of a squat, bench, or deadlift, those are our three main lifts, or trap bar deadlift, we do a set of one of, one of, the, one of the two assistance exercises. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, we squat, do some kind of squat, some kind of push, and some kind of pull every day. When we bench press, we do dumbbell squats, squats, and dumbbell straight leg deadlifts, okay? Uh, what, <clears throat> I can't believe, this is how much I've grown. Like, this is my version of growth, right? Uh, I always thought the dumbbell squat was lame because, you know, if you squat 1,000 pounds, what, what's a 100-pound dumbbell gonna be? Well, I'm not a high school kid. I was much stronger. When we first started doing dumbbell squats, I did it because I needed to teach the JV kids how to squat. And we needed, uh, they could body weight squat okay after a while, but we just needed to add some load and I wasn't gonna put a bar on these kids back. The changes that we had with the kids uh, incorporating this in total, uh, into a total training program has been outstanding. Um, Bricker, that kid there, or he's not there, I don't know. Yeah, he is, I don't know, it doesn't matter. Uh, Bricker, for example, put a, we only had 100 pound dumbbells for a while. He put a 100 pound dumbbell and put six chains on top of that. You guys know what that, how much that weighs? 232. 232 pounds for uh, five sets of 15. You guys, can you imagine holding a 232 pound dumbbell? Okay. Granted, when we first started, none of these kids would touch the 100 pound dumbbell. Now we have kids doing five sets of 20 with the 150. Okay. The biggest takeaway was is one, for whatever reason, everyone's biceps got stronger, or bigger, I should say, because they were statically holding, right? Their upper backs got huge, because again, they're statically holding. 
and we have zero hip mobility problems anymore because they're able to, it's like doing a front squat. Uh, and the other thing I like about it is there's no consequence. You, if you fail, you just drop the dumbbell, right? Plus, to get a 150 pound dumbbell up in position, they can't put it on a box or cheat. They have to do a you know, really shitty looking continental clean. And I think that's important, okay? But anyway, all right. Uh, including the warm up, the jumping, the main lifts, assistance, and running, we generally spend no more than I'd say an hour and 15 to an hour and 20 minutes at the most. Our training is incredibly efficient. Uh, that's what I designed it to be. There's a couple reasons why. One, you don't need to spend a lot of time. I think everyone kind of understands that. Two, working long hours doesn't equal anything other than working long hours. Um, quantity or quality is always better than quantity. Three, most of our kids work. Uh, and, we, it's a very working class town, so we got to need to get the kids out of there. Four, I talked to Joe Ken about this. I want the kids to come in. If we're there from uh, 3 o'clock to 7.30, how many kids end up showing up after a while? Zero. Zero. So I want them fresh. I want them excited to come in. Uh, again, we started out with, uh, now we have like 60 kids at one time come in, and it's all voluntary. And it's the most amazing thing you've seen, uh, just the, the way everything's turned around. Number five or six, I don't remember what number I am. I don't want to spend any more time there than I have to. I tell the kids all the time, I have nothing in interest with them. I don't like them as people. I'm just joking. <laughs> but they're 18 years or you know, 15, 16 years old, 14 years old. I don't have anything in common. I don't really care uh, to, <laughs> I don't have no interest with them. You know? Does that make sense? That's my joke that I tell them. You're so ugly and my wife is so pretty, you suck. So, uh, and they, the kids have really responded to that. Um, because they know that everything, that I tell them, everything we do matters. I will never do anything in the weight room that doesn't matter because it's wasting my time. JL talked about time. I refuse to waste my time. Um, so don't confuse lots of work with good quality work. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. All right. Now here comes the meat of everything. How much time do I got left? Does anyone know? I'm supposed to get cue cards or something. Good times. All right. Good, good answer. Okay, <clears throat> if anyone's any, read any of my books, I always believe in principles over everything else. Everything I do is based on principles. It's not about the sets and reps and the exercises and all that stuff. It's more about principles. This is it. If I could sum everything up, it's don't kill them. I gotta see how much time I have left. How much time do I have left? Holy shit, oh man. Don't kill them, that's it, okay? We never kill our kids. That doesn't mean the workouts aren't hard, but I never want to leave a kid you know, puking at the end of a workout. I think that's idiotic. So here it is, no record boards. Other thing I tell the kids, I don't, do not care how much you squat, bench, or deadlift. I do not care. It doesn't bother me. If you start chasing numbers, then everything gets thrown out the window. Their form goes to shit. They start getting nervous about this and that, whatever, I don't know. I don't care. Our training maxes are so fucking low <clears throat> Let's put it this way. Our average team deadlift was 415 using like uh, between two and 10 reps. Does that make sense? Do the rep. We had five guys with training maxes over 300 pounds. Does that make sense? We hardly, we don't train that heavy. We train the main lifts for power. You see this right here? Everything is done with speed. Number of reasons why. One, football is a power sport. These kids need to learn how to apply force. That's the hardest thing to teach these kids. When you come off of a ball, it's, if you're an eighth of a second quicker, you win that play. So I'm trying to get these kids to learn. Control, 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 explode, control. So that's a big thing. We can't do that with young kids with very heavy weight. The other thing is, if I'm squatting and Jeremy Frey and I are squatting and we've got 495 on the bar and something gets out of whack, both Jeremy and I have enough experience and strength to either bail or get out of it. Does that make sense? A 15 year old kid, does he have any experience doing that? Hell no. That's how they get hurt. They get, their kids aren't very smart. You guys have to understand that a group or a person is often smart, but as a group, everyone's dumb, right? The mob mentality. So, uh, <clears throat> so no record boards and it kills the kids in the, especially in the beginning, they all, I can do much more. I'm like, I don't care. Oh, I, can, I think I can do more. No, I don't care. 
We had kids that have been with us since I got there in, in about mid-2016 that we go up five pounds on all of our training maxes every three weeks. We have majority of the kids in the squat and deadlift have never reset. If you add up all that time, it's pretty insane, okay? Um, as an example, Brickers just bumps up five pounds every time. The kid who went from 185, he just benched 275 for eight, all right? I don't think he's touched anything over 250. Uh, in the, in the weight room. So I so say this is a little misnomer. It says eight months, not eight weeks. It's actually four years, not eight weeks. When we get the kids coming in, I tell them we got four years to get you better. I don't rush anything. The way that we train, there's a, that was the hardest thing to get these kids to do, to understand the pace of our workouts. And we're still not even close to where I want them to be. But again, I have to compromise. I'm not going to shove this shit down the kids' throats over and over again. <clears throat> but even when we start, we only start with, uh, instead of two assistant lifts, we do one. Because the kids sometimes can't, like, which one do I do? Which, I don't understand. So fuck it, we're just going to do two things. We pound the shit out of them and let them leave, okay? 